Hello and welcome to the episode 174 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Today, we have a birthday, the preparation for the Beatles' last world tour and a couple of family moments. On the 23rd of June 1940, Stuart Ferguson Victor Sutcliffe was born in Edinburgh, Scotland, from Millie, a school teacher, and Charles, a naval officer. The Sutcliffes moved to Liverpool in 1943. Stu became friend with John Lennon during his years at the Liverpool College of Art and became a bass player in John's band, the Quarrymen. While he never became an accomplished player, it was him to push for a name change for the band into the Silver Beatles and, later, the Beatles. He died on the 10th of April 1962, as detailed in episode 100 of this very podcast. In 1960, the Silver Beatles played the Institute in Neston, England. These concerts, organized by Paramount Enterprises and Les Dodd, regularly featured the band, which was, by all accounts, possible. Unfortunately, the lack of a drummer made further progress impossible and further engagements really hard to find. The Silver Beatles were George Harrison, John Lennon and Paul McCartney on guitar and voice and Stu Sutcliffe on bass. One year later, in 1961, the Beatles, now without Sutcliffe but with Pete Best on drums, performed once again at the Top Ten Club in Hamburg, West Germany, for their ongoing second residency in town. It is unclear whether or not the lads had another recording session with Tony Sheridan in the afternoon. See yesterday's episode for more info. But Beatles historian Mark Lewison thinks that it is highly unlikely. Further progress in the band's career one year later, in 1962, with the same lineup of the Beatles engaged at the prestigious Victory Memorial Hall in Northwich, some 25 miles, about 40 kilometers, southeast of Liverpool. The performance, in front of promoter Louis Buckley, responsible for bookings in dance halls all over England, went down very well. On the 23rd of June 1963, the Beatles topped the bill for the ABC television show Lucky Stars Summer Spin, the summer edition of Thank You Lucky Stars, entirely dedicated to the Mercy Beat boom. The show aired on the 29th of June between 6.05 and 6.45 pm on most of the ITV network, included performances of Jerry and the Pacemakers, Billy J. Kramer with the Dakotas, The Foremost, The Searchers, and others. The Beatles mime performances of I Saw Her Standing There and From Me to You. The whole show was recorded at the Alpha TV studios in Birmingham. In 1964, we get the second night of the Beatles at the Town Hall in Wellington, New Zealand. Another two shows in front of a total of 5,000 fans. In 1965, in the evening, the Beatles left Lyon and France by train to arrive in Milan, Italy, late at night. Another trip in 1966, this time the Fabs flew from London to Munich, West Germany, for the beginning of their 1966 war tour. Let's move to 1967. On this date, between 8 and 11 pm, an orchestra of 13 musicians plus its conductor recorded several takes of overdubs onto take 10 of All You Need Is Love at the EMI Studios. The musicians for this and the other recording sessions of the song were Sidney Sachs, Patrick Hulling, Eric Bowie and John Ronane on violin, Lion Ross and John Holmes on cello, Rex Morris and Don Honeywill on tenor saxophone, Evan Watkins and Harry Spain on trombone, Jack Amblow on accordion, Stanley Woods on trumpet and flugelhorn, and David Mason on piccolo trumpet. The conductor was Mike Vickers of Manfred Mann. The work, largely a rehearsal in preparation for the definitive recording session that had to take place during the 25th of June worldwide satellite broadcast, was completed in 10 takes, 
including a reduction mix to facilitate further work. Let's close the episode with two intimate moments. For the first one, the love affair between Paul McCartney and Linda Eastman was consummated on this date in 1968, with the two also spending time together in Beverly Hills, alone, and with musician friends and Capitol executive Ken Fritz. One year later, in 1969, John Lennon and his six-year-old son Julian were with Yoko Ono and her five-year-old daughter Kyoto Cox on a holiday in Twinwin, Wales. The party sent a postcard of the soon-to-be-invested Prince of Wales Charles to Ringo Starr, with a simple hello written on the back. This was just a stop on the way to a road trip to and about Scotland, as we will see in later episodes. But let's not jump the gun. This episode is over, and as usual, you should really pay me a visit on my website and, especially, on www.simonmas.com support if you fancy to help me out in any way. Any help is most welcomed. But enough with me talking now, see you tomorrow. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.